I'm Gus Mueller, host of Vanderbilt's Nashville Live uh, Vandy's Journal Club. Um, I'm here at Vandy talking with uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Todd Ricketts, who I'm sure many of you know. And you know, Todd, uh, maybe we'll just start things off about talking about the room we're in. Uh, I know you have several labs, but maybe tell, uh, talk a little bit about where we are right now. Uh, this is the reverberation chamber here at Vanderbilt, and we use this in a lot of hearing aid research um, and speech recognition research. It's a lab that we can uh, really change how echoey the, the room is. Uh, we can change it from uh, reverberation times from about two and a half seconds down to a very dead room. Uh, we also have, uh, as you can see, several audio and video sources that we can place around this room. And it's a room that's very flexible, and we can turn it into acoustically at least a lot of different environments and so that makes it a, a nice room to kind of evaluate how well hearing aids work in a lot of a lot of different environments. Good. Now um, there's also an anechoic chamber around here someplace I know um, right and, and, and you probably have studies going on there also. Yeah and that's really the opposite of this room. This room if we take everything out of it is is very echoey, uh, real high re long reverberation time. Uh, the uh, anechoic chamber is just the opposite, where there's really no echoes at all. And that allows us to look very precisely at how a hearing aid uh, interacts with when there is really essentially no environment present because there are no reflections present. And, and what about our old basic sound booth? Uh, do you ever get back in there again, or that's sort of gone by the wayside? No, we get into the sound booth occasionally, but we don't do a lot of sound field testing in the sound booth. Whenever we want to uh, play sounds in the environment, we like a little bit more control and, and frankly, a little larger space uh, than we have in a sound booth. Yeah. Well, back to the um, your, your contributions that uh, you've been making as part of this club. Um, I know um, last summer, I think it was, you did some presentations about hearing aid articles. Um, I, I know you're coming back again this summer. Um, you got some articles picked out? Uh, nothing picked out yet. I think there's a lot of interesting work out there. Uh, the fun thing to me about hearing aids is it's such a broad area. There's just so many different uh, sub areas within it. Uh, from the technology to the environment uh, to, to the individual people. And uh, new interest in, in areas like listening air, effort and fatigue that people haven't looked at, as well as new technologies that are really relatively new within the last year or two to the market. Now, it probably would be a little tacky, tacky to report on your own articles, I guess. But, but, um, but since you can talk about them now, uh, what, what's some projects that you have going on? I, I know there are many, but... Uh, Give us a few highlights of what's sort of happening right here. We're at the pulse, folks. This is the pulse of hearing aid research. So tell us, tell us what's, what's, what we're going to see in print in a year or two. Well, we've got uh, three or four main lines of research that we're, we're looking at right now. Uh, we continue to do a fair amount of work trying to refine directional hearing aids, uh, especially for school-aged children. And so we're doing a lot of work in that area, um, doing things like following kids around in school, uh, as well as testing them in, in simulated environments like this. Uh, we're also looking at how particular types of, of hearing aid processing uh, can affect listening effort. And so we've got some work going in that area. And one of the newer areas that we're, we're uh, experimenting in is kind of looking at, at spatialization issues. And that is, uh, if you walk into a room, uh, for example, a party type atmosphere, and you want to converse with somebody and somebody starts talking, how easy is it to find them and start understanding speech? And this particular setup that we have here, that's really what it's aimed at when you've got, you know, you can see the person and hear the person and maybe it's not an easy environment. There's a lot of noise. Can you find them? How difficult is that? How much does hearing loss affect that? And how does different hearing aid processing affect that? So it, it really has a lot of practical things that will apply directly to the clinician, really. That's what, that's what our hope is. Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. Well, uh, Todd will be with us uh, the first week in June talking about uh, his favorite hearing aid articles of the year, and I'm, I'll be looking forward to it. So thank you. Thank you.